Hey, Crow. Yes, Steve? This will be the first day that we open up shop, right? Yeah, this is uh, our first day, and uh, yeah, there's no business. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what's going on. Well, what I think contributes to the lack of customers is perhaps it's in your goddamn room, and the lighting is horrible. How dare you? I built this company from the ground up, good sir. During the world's craziest event, I'm still here busting my butt selling Gunpla to all these beautiful patrons. I hear what you're saying, Crow, but no one's coming. So maybe it's just time to wrap up shop. I'm not closing up shop. And in fact, we actually just got a new shipment in. So one of the newest kits that actually came out last week is the SD Cross Silhouette Barbatos Lupus Rex. And honestly, my first impressions of it is pretty good. What about you, Steve? It honestly looks like a bastard child. I have no affiliation with this Gundam, and I hope it rots in hell. Hot take on it. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at all the parts that come in the box. This video is sponsored by NewTypeHQ.com. Get all your kits, your paints, tools, and supplies over at the website. And don't forget to use the promo code CROSAMA, or you can click down in the description below to get 10% off. Now with it completely done and built, I actually really like it. It looks menacing, it holds poses really well. Honestly, it's pretty damn cool. I mean, what is your thoughts different on it now that you're seeing it in person, Steve? You know what it is. Oh, really? Okay, tell me why. Because now I know for a fact I can kick its little ass. Well, yeah, because you're like six times its height. But honestly, Barbatos isn't any pushover, so I wouldn't get too cocky over there. Cocky's my middle name. No, it's Joseph. So the first form we're gonna take a look at is going to be the SD form. This isn't gonna have all the extended parts and it's not gonna have any articulation in any of the joints because it doesn't have any joints. It just has the shoulder and then just the arm and that's it. It looks good though. I honestly really like the aesthetics of the SD form. I was kind of playing around with it before I started, you know, turning the camera on and I like it. Uh, it really doesn't have much of articulation but you can still pull off some pretty decent moves. Now in terms of details, you are gonna have some little etched in details right here in the V-fin uh, for the head. Yeah, you got some of the vents on the side and uh, a little bit on the face plate. But for the most part, you're not gonna have any panel lines on the head itself. Uh, just a couple of raised parts right here, which would be really good for painting into a different color, like a little different shade of uh, white, or if you wanna paint it gray or something like that. But you know, the head itself does not look bad whatsoever. 
Now for the eyes, you are going to have two different sets of eyes. You're going to have the crazy looking eyes, uh, basically in this berserk form, and then you're going to have the green eyes. So not really too bad. Uh, I'll display the red eyes a little bit later, but for the most part, I do like the little cartoony look of the green eyes. Now for the chest, you are going to have the Tekadin symbol right there etched into that red part. It looks good. I'm really happy they went, went this route and they could have easily just made that a sticker, but this is the cross silhouette line. They're not going to do something like that to us, right? Uh, but anyways, you're going to have the body and you're going to have some little etched in parts right there. So if you do want to paint a line, you could definitely do so. Now for the torso, you are still going to have like the little piston area. So if you're a fan of like painting it like much like I am, then you could definitely do so. For the arms, I know a lot of people are really hyped about, you know, having all the uh, the yellow hands, and you are going to have some gray in the palm, but this is still going to have to be colored uh, gray at the base of the fingers. Now for the rest of the arm, it's going to have some raised parts right there, which looks really good. You can fill that in with a different color, some gray or black. Um, you're going to have to paint this because I believe that is actually supposed to be gray. Um, and you're going to have this huge seam line right there in the middle, which is unfortunate. But if you are fairly decent at seam line removal, that shouldn't be a problem. I'm probably going to have to do that just because I don't want to see that giant seam line. Now underneath, this part is actually going to come out and you're going to be able to extend out this claw and uh, or sub arm, however you want to call it. And this can actually uh, grab onto like the mace that the high grade Barbados uh, can use which is a side weapon accessory unfortunate but you can buy that uh, side weapon accessory you can grapple to that or anything else that has like a little hilt on it that can fit into inside there shoulders look great you're gonna have to paint that yellow or use the sticker that comes with the kit the waist is solid as well don't really have any issues it looks good all around now for the legs, I'm actually really hyped that they uh, just had this as yellow parts and not yellow stickers. Really wasn't sure if they was going to go that route because I was kind of avoiding a lot of the promotional photos. I kind of wanted to be surprised with the overall build and sure enough, I really am. Uh, you are going to have to use uh, paint or stickers for the front of the knees right here. Uh, and overall, I mean, the legs are really snappy. I like them. They, you know, have like some of the high, you know, pipings right here in the back. So if you want to paint that red or whatever color you're choosing, you can definitely do so. But man, it's just really nice to have something that just looks as good as this SD. Now for the backpack, it is pretty color accurate. Uh, a few minor things is obviously the green is going to have to go inside there. Then there's some black that's supposed to go inside here, but the backpack is actually supposed to be white, which the high grade was not. It was all gray, which is unfortunate. But yeah, I'm really digging this. The design is good. The details are great. So yeah, no issues. Now let's look at articulation. The head is going to have a ball joint right here at the base, and then it's also going to have this little hinge section so it can move back and forth. Uh, pretty, pretty good articulation all around. The shoulder is going to be on ball joints. This shoulder armor can actually move up and down. Ball joint at the base of the shoulder. Ball joint on the wrist. And you get a little bit of movement for the front skirt. Ball joint for the waist. Backpack can move up and down. Ball joints at the hips, but it's going to be pretty loose, so just watch out. Ball joint for the feet. And ball joint for the ankle armor. Now for accessories, you are going to have the mace, and this is when it's retracted. So you can actually... Uh, you pull that out and it's going to be extended so it can be used in the hands. Now it is going to come with two fists so that way you can hold any kind of weapons. Unfortunately the fingers are not going to be painted yellow so you're going to have to paint that on your own. Now for the most part it actually has no issues holding the weapon. However if it's in a different like angle or it's just not in that little sweet spot then yeah it's going to sag a little bit. But if you either tighten the joints up or you just kind of find that little sweet spot then you're not going to have any issues having it hold it up. Now it also comes with an adapter on the back skirt, so that way you can soar the mace. Just like that, but it is going to be a little bit back heavy. And your sticker sheet really isn't too hefty. It's all stuff that you can easily paint, except for the eyes, which, you know, you can use it. And you also get a wire for the tail. And now it's in its cross silhouette mode. It's really good. It has greater posability and it just looks better. It's taller, the eyes uh, essentially change. You can keep it in the old set, but honestly, you're gonna want it with uh, the kind of like sharp eyes, you know, like the more traditional look. And here you can see it has a little bit of a bicep. 
and a little bit of a thigh. The posability is not going to be bad either. The head is roughly going to remain the same. These shoulders can actually pop out a little bit to give it a little bit more range of movement. Bend at the elbow. The ball joints are going to be on the side so that way you can pop the piece on there and give it a little bit more range of movement as well as some pretty decent splits. Rotation right here. A bend right here at the knee. And the frame piece in the foot is going to be elevated. And you can also recreate the form that it was in whenever it had its last battle. Uh, spoilers. But yeah, it gets its arm destroyed and uh, it's going to be pretty beat up. So you're going to have to do the extra work in order to put that battle damage and all the scarring into it. But you know what? I believe in you guys and I think y'all can pull it off just fine. And if we utilize the silhouette booster mode, we're gonna get a little bit more length in those legs and then the arm is gonna be extended just a little bit. Uh, but in, for the most part, you're only gonna be using the biceps as well as the thighs for the, uh, the kit itself because the hands and much of the other parts aren't really gonna be applicable, uh, especially for the rounded parts. Those are gonna be more for like the Zakus. This is gonna be more angular and have you know points. So. Yeah, you're gonna have to just stick with what you can get. Uh, however, you can use the hands and other things, but the hands are, are obviously not gonna match whatsoever with this kit because this kit has very unique hands and fingers, so you yeah, gotta do what you gotta do. And if you're wondering what else is gonna come with the Silhouette Booster, it's just gonna be, you know, all the curved parts like I mentioned. Uh, you're gonna have these hands, but it's like all the stuff you're really not gonna be using. You can use these if you wanna replace uh, the, you know, the little legs and just have it very, very SD chibi. And then you're also gonna get the GM parts over here, but um, yeah, that's just a whole nother kit in itself. Uh, but for the most part, you're just gonna be using the biceps and the calves, um, not the calves, the thighs, and that's gonna be it. Now the bicep is going to be white, which looks good, but the joint part is actually going to be white as well. So you're gonna have the white and the gray conflicting. It's gonna look really weird. I just recommend you painting it if you're gonna use the booster. And the same thing is gonna be for the thighs. Yeah, the joint's gonna be gray, other joint's gonna be white. So you're gonna have to do some painting, but you are gonna get that extended leg. And I honestly, I like it. So for my final thoughts, this kit is awesome. It honestly is one of the better cross silhouette kits out there. Can't really find too many problems except for a couple of parts popping off here and there, namely going to be the front skirts. That's not really too much of an issue, but it happens. The fact this kit comes with the cross silhouette frame bundled in is just icing on the cake. I really like that and I really wish that more cross silhouette kits would just have that feature because seeking all these cross silhouette frames can become a little bit of a hassle for a lot of people. However, uh, if you really want to get the booster, you are going to have to get that separately. So I do recommend some techniques in order to make this kit really shine on your shelf, such as panel line, top coat, as well as weathering. Now just using some bare minimum stuff such as panel lining is honestly going to be good enough because this kit definitely already looks good alone. However, uh, maybe just try your hand at some weathering because of the fact that the origin of this kit, Iron Blooded Orphans, it's really uh, grounded. It, it has a lot of dirt, a lot of sand, a lot of mud. So uh, those kind of weathering effects could be really useful to try your hand on on this kit because that's just how it always looks. Um, so try your hand at it. Uh, maybe if it's not for you, then cool, but at least you tried. Uh, but if you are normally a uh, person that you know, weathers their kits, you're probably gonna have a blast doing it to this one. Well, that pretty much concludes the review. Honestly, with the uh, final thoughts I already you know, expressed, I don't really have much else to really talk about it. I think it's a really perfect kit when it comes to the SD cross of the wet line. Don't really have too many issues. Obviously, it's going to need some paint, it's going to need some work. You can use some you know, little scribing here and there, and it's going to have to use a little bit of seam line removal. But other than that, I mean, it's a pretty top-notch kit. You know what, Crow? I think you're right. I think I, I've just been heartless this whole time. And considerate of all the work and efforts that Bandai puts into their model kits. You know what, God, God damn it! I'm a change robot. I'm going to look at things with a, a different point of view. A bright-eyed point of view. Oh, see Steve, I knew you had it in you to just look at the positives. 
No, Kron, I'm just fucking with you. 